There we go. So today is, hey, it's my daughter's birthday, March 9th. Yes, we're going to have dinner together. So today, our whole idea today is actually solving. And I'm going to use a word called quadratics. Quadratic equations, okay? So write that down. We're going to be solving quadratic equations. And I gave you two new words. Well, one is one specific new word. Um, so a quadratic is really any x squared equation. And then equation means it's going to be equal to 0, and we need to solve, OK? So when you see the word quadratic, I'm really talking about an x squared equation. It's a weird word, but quadratic, you would think, means 4, but it's not. That's quartic. Quadratic really means 2. And there's a reason I'll teach you later on why it's that. But when you see the word quadratic, when you see the word quadratic, it's x squared. OK, I'll say that again. When you see the word quadratic, it means some x squared equation. OK, everybody thumbs up. See this word quadratic, it's some x squared equation. OK, now equations because we can have an equal sign. So if I take a look at the first example, I do have an equal sign. Anytime we have an x squared, there are always, always, always two answers. There's always two answers. So to get our two answers, we need two equations. To get our two answers, we need two equations. Uh, it must, it must equal zero. Must equal zero to start. So the first thing you do, that's the very first thing you do, is you make sure it equals zero. Okay, first thing, we want to do this first. And sure enough, in example one, it equals zero. So that's done. Okay, so we want to first make sure that our quadratic is equal to zero. After that, we want to factor. And the reason we like to factor is because it gives us our many equations. That's why we want to factor. It gives us our many equations. So example one, I'll factor. It is not a trinomial. It's not a trinomial. It's a binomial, so I'm going to common factor. So in example one, I'm going to common factor. And what I see, this one, this is like the one Dylan did on a warm-up, right? So what do they have in common? What's the biggest multiple between 4 and 20? 4. So I common factor out of 4. And what else do they have in common? So I make my mini equations by common factoring out of 4x. They have a multiple of 4, and they have an x in common. And then what's left over if I factor that out? Well, 4 goes into 4 one time. And I'd have an x left over. And then 4 goes into 25 times, and it still equals 0. So all I did, all I did was I common factored. What do they have in common? A multiple of 4 and an x. Now I have my mini equations, right? Since I have my mini equations, I just want to solve them. I'm going to go 4x equals 0. And I like to put a little dividing line. That's what I like to do. So I got a 4x equals 0, and, and a 1x minus 5 equals 0, right? And I'm just going to solve. So I, yes? Do you have to put the 1? No, you don't have to put the 1 at all. No. no. Good question, Grace. So then, if I solve, well, to solve for x, I divide by 4, divide by 4 on both sides, I get x equals 0. That is one answer. I go plus 5 plus 5, x equals 5. Those are my two zeros. We're going to call them zeros because they make the equation 0. These are called zeros. These are called zeros because they make the equation zero. If you plug in five, it'll make it zero. Watch, I'm going to show you that real quickly. What do we find? I'll show you this real quick. If I went four times zero squared minus 20 times zero, I get zero. I kind of expected it. it gives me a zero. So this answer gives me zero. And if I put in the five, watch, four times five squared subtract 20 times 5, my answer better be 0. You guys agree? Because I, I call them zeros. Boom. 0. 
So the two answers I have are called zeros because they make the equation zero. Okay? Any questions? So let's find the zeros. In example two, it must equal zero. So I'm going to bring the 30x to the other side. So hopefully, we're in geometry now. You guys all agree if I subtract 30x, you agree with that? I don't want to show the step. We're, we're beyond that. I know we're, you guys agree we're going to subtract 30x. So I'm going to rewrite it as a 15x squared. Subtract 30x equals 0. It has to equal 0. So I brought the 30x over to it. The way I did that is go by going minus 30x, minus 30x. But I really want to skip that step. Now, first thing, it must equal 0. Second thing, factor. So again, it's a binomial. It's not a trinomial. So I'd ask myself, what do they have in common? What do they have in common? Go ahead. Grace, what do they have in common? They have a fifth. Don't they have a multiple of 15? You guys agree with multiple of 15 and uh, x. So if they have a multiple of 15 and an x in common, I can common factor out the 15x. So if I take a 15x out of the first term, I pulled it out. What's left over? 15x. I pulled it out. What's left over? Just an x. Minus 15. I pulled 15 out of 30, but I divided it, right? 15 goes into 30 two times, and I pulled out the x, okay? What do you think? Not too bad? So then I've got these mini equations, right? All right, well, my mini equations are going to be a 15x equals 0 and an x minus 2 equals 0. So you take your mini equations. I've got a 15x equals 0, and I have an x minus 2 equals 0, and then I'm just going to solve, right? I'm just going to solve. So I need two answers, always two answers. So divide by 15, divide by 15, and one answer is 0. Plus 2, plus 2 x equals 2. And those are my two zeros. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep going. Fret, uh, eighth graders, if you guys need to leave, make sure you grab the worksheet. Um, and I'll keep teaching, okay? Now, example three, while these guys are leaving. Example three is a trinomial. It's what we did yesterday. This is a trinomial. So we're going to factor this differently. We're going to factor it like we did yesterday. Parentheses, 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 parentheses equals zero. Okay. This is what we did yesterday. See the difference? You guys see the difference between example one? Do you see the difference between example one? Take a look at example one for a second, and example three. Do you see the difference? First of all, example three doesn't have anything in common. So remember how we did yesterday? Sure. X x, right? What times what makes 12? What times what makes 12? How about a negative 3 and a negative 4? You guys agree with Teva? Okay, so it's factored. And then we go to our many equations, which is a x minus 3 equals 0 and an x minus 4 equals 0, right? And we just solve. Okay. So I'm going to go plus 3, plus 3, x equals 3. There's one answer. Easy, right? Plus 4, plus 4, x equals 4, okay? Now, again, I want to show you this because it's worthwhile because these are called zeros. These are called zeros. So they're called zeros. Let me show you, okay? So originally, if I go, I'm going to plug my 3. Watch my plug in my 3. I go 3 squared minus 7 times 3 plus 12. You do not have to do this. I'm just trying to prove a point. They're called zeros because it equals zero. And watch the four. Four squared minus seven times four plus 12 and it equals zero. So we found the zeros. These two values make the equation zero. Why is that important? Well eventually these become these become those points right there, which have a height or a y value of zero. All of this is going to build, okay? So I want you to know why that's important, okay? You ready to turn the page? Okay. Um, example four. Well, it needs to equal zero. Equal 
zero. It has to equal zero. It doesn't. It must equal zero if we're going to find zeros. It needs to equal zero if we're going to find zeros. So I'm going to bring the eight over. So I'm going to subtract eight to bring it over. Does that make sense? So I'll rewrite this. If I subtract eight, I'll have an x squared plus two x minus eight equals zero. And then it's a trinomial, so I'm going to factor. It is definitely a trinomial. So I'll factor it like we did yesterday. Okay. And x and x makes x squared, right? And then I need to use, well, what times what makes 8? What's a good combination? 2 and 4. And how about we go positive 4 and a negative 2? Okay, does that make sense? Why would you go positive 4, negative 2? They'd multiply it to make a negative 8, but they would add to make the positive 2. Thanks, Tava. And then I just have to set up my mini equations. x plus 4 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. By now, you're probably already guessing it's always the opposite of these anyways, isn't it? Because that's how you solve. So minus 4, minus 4, one answer is negative 4 plus 2 plus 2, the other 0 is 2. Those are my zeros. Am I doing okay? Okay, good. Now, example 5. So I really like to have a positive x squared. I like, I like this term to be positive. It makes it easier to factor. So if I move the x squared over, it becomes negative. I don't like that. There you go. And the 3. That's exactly right. That's the way I'm going to do it. Thanks, Grace. I agree with Grace. Let's move the 18 and the 3x over so that way it would be backwards, but it's going to be like this. I'm going to have 0 equals x squared. I'm going to move the 3x over, so I'll subtract 3x, right? And I'll move the 18 over, so I'll have a minus 18. Good job, Grace. And then it, it's just backwards, but the same problem, right? It's just backwards. So if I factor this, am I going too fast? I'm okay? I'm going to go x and x, right? x and x. I'm going to go, what are my multiples? What are my multiples? Good, nice job. Somebody besides Tava, yay, you, Calvin. How about a negative 6 and a positive 3? You agree with that? You don't make Tava do all the work in here, okay? So then I've got my mini equations. I've got 0 equals x minus 6 and 0 equals x plus 3. Okay. Plus 6 plus 6. One answer is 6. Minus 3 minus 3. The other answer is negative 3. Okay. Last problem, and I wrote it wrong. Doggone it. I was in a hurry. So we're going to rewrite this problem as a 2x cubed plus a 14x squared plus a 24x equals 0. Scribble that out. I wrote it wrong. I was in a hurry yesterday. I got a lot, I got, I got a lot going on with track, but that's okay. It's all fun. So go ahead and rewrite example 6. Go and rewrite. So I have an x cubed. I have an x cubed. That means I'm going to have three answers. Of your x cubed, so I'm going to have three answers. Well, the first thing I want to do is make this easier. I want to simplify. I want to make this easier. And what I notice is that they all have a common multiple of 2. Do you agree with that? 2 goes in 2, 14 and 24. And they all have an x in common. Do you agree with that? So if I take out a 2x out of all three terms, it's going to make what's inside easier. Okay, so I took out a 2 and x. I would have a 2x, I'd have, I'm sorry, a 1x squared plus a 7x plus a 12. That's a bad looking x, but that's an x squared. And now this we've done before. We've done the trinomial. What times what makes 12? You guys know this. What times what makes 12? Right, so keeping the 2x on the outside, let's just factor this trinomial like we've been doing before. So ignore the 2x while we do this, right? x and x. 
I heard three and four. I, I like that. All right. So I factored twice. First, I common factored to make it easier. You guys see that? And then I got a trinomial I knew, x plus 3, x plus 4. Now, mini equations, right? Mini equations. So we're going to go 2x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. I've got my mini equations. I need three answers. I'm going to get three answers. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 0, right? Minus 3, minus 3, x equals negative 3. Minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4, okay? What do you think? Can we do this? Okay, let me go ahead and stop the video.